Hi friends, in this video, let's talk about constraints in the SQL Server and why constraints are required in the SQL Server. Constraints are really required to maintain the accuracy and reliability of the data in the database tables. So to, how to maintain the accuracy and readability or reliability? So we'll see now. <clears throat> there are around six constraints in the SQL Server. So these are the default constraints which is provided by the SQL Server Management Studio. So what are those six? We'll talk about that. So apart from those six constraints, we can create indexes. Indexes also works similar to the constraints, but those indexes we are going to create means as a developer. So we will be creating the indexes. Now, first of all, we'll talk about some time on the constraints. Constraints are used to specify the rules for the data in a particular table. So what is meant by a rule? Let us say I have a, a column with a name of employee ID. So employee ID should be numeric only. It should not allow characteristic values. It is a kind of business rule. So that is nothing but a. So constraints are used to specify rules for the data in a table. That is a one kind of sample rule I told. Now again. So constraints are used to limit the type of the data and that can go into a particular table. So let us say, so there is a salary column is there. So I, I am planning to keep only numerics. I don't want to uh, allow character values. So that time I can keep it as a numeric value. Apart from that, so I want to add a special condition saying that salary should be a more than a particular value. So that time I can add a rule to uh, keep to maintain the particular value. If the salary is more than that particular value, then only my column is going to allow that particular value. Otherwise, it is going to be denied or it is going to be aborted. Next. So if there is any violation, like a, let us say, so I don't want to uh, enter, I don't want to give the salary which is less than a particular value. So if this kind of violations ha happen on a particular constraints, then the data is going to be aborted of the particular row. Data is going to be aborted in the particular row. And again, so the constraints are can be at the column level or can be at the table level, can be at the column level as well as can be at the table level. So if the column level, if it is a column level constraint, it means that we will write the constraint on the column level. If it is at the table level means we will write on the top of the table, on the top of the whole table. Now we'll talk about the constraints individually. So that is about a like a detailed information on the constraints. Now let me talk about what are all the different type of constraints in the SQL Server. So first one is not null constraints. So not null constraints. So this is the first one. So what is a not null constraints? So when you specify a particular column is a not null, it does not allow null values into the particular column. So let us say I have a table with the name of employee. Employee. So which contains the columns of ID, name, comma, joining date. So in this scenario, so I, I, I am keeping employee ID is a not null. I am keeping employee ID is a not null column. So it means that, so whenever you try to insert a value into the employee table, so if you try to keep ID as a nullable value, if you try to insert a null into the ID, so it is going to be fail because you kept it as a not null. Not null is nothing but it does not allow null values into the particular column. So because I am creating not null as a on the column level. So if you create not null on the name column, it means that so name column does not allow nulls, does not allow nulls. It should have some value either A, B, C, whatever the value, it should have some value. It should not allow nulls into the particular column. So that is nothing but a not null constraints. So one table can have multiple not null uh, constraints on a single table. One table can have a multiple not null constraints on a single table. So the next one is unique constraint. So unique constraint. So what is unique? So when you specify a particular column as a unique, it means that that column is going to contain unique values, unique values. I mean, I, let me tell you example. Let us say I have ID column. So means if you talk about a physical scenario, practical scenario, so ID cannot be duplicated. 
means one one id i cannot allot to the multiple people it means that id is unique in the entire company so in that scenario i am going to keep employee id as a unique so it means that it should not allow duplicate values so once one id is allotted to a single person let us say 1 2 3 is assigned 1 2 3 is assigned it means that i cannot give this 1 2 3 id to the multiple people let us say even if i try to give 1 2 3 is already assigned even i try to give 1 2 3 again to the different employee it is going to fail that particular row action is going to be aborted because of unique constraint because of unique constraints so a one table can have multiple unique constraints let us say id can be unique and the other column also can be unique if i need it but ideally we will keep id as a unique constraint and see when you keep id as a unique but it should it is going to allow null values it is going to allow one null value it don't allow second null because it is unique constraint because unique is applied on the this particular id column not null is not applied in this scenario in the b scenario not null is not applied so that's the reason why it is allowing one null that is one of the important question so when a column is defined as a unique so that is going to allow null or not yes it is going to allow one null value in the entire table that is a second constraint unique constraint third one is primary constraint primary key constraint so primary key is nothing but a combination of not null plus unique the combination of not null plus unique so it means that so it is going to satisfy not null behavior plus unique behavior so it means that so when you specify particular let us say when you specify id is a primary key it means that it does not allow null and it is going to take unique values in the entire table so not null plus unique so i am going to create id as a primary key constraint it means that so it is going to be non nullable and it is going to be unique value let us say 1 2 3 is defined once and it does not allow 1 2 3 again for a different employee and it does not allow nulls as well hello even single null also even single nulls also it does not allow and a one table can contain only one primary key so i cannot give multiple primary keys in a single table so one primary key per table so i cannot give a one more i cannot define a one more primary key in a same table so one primary key per table why because so if you if you see in a separate video i talked about why a table can contain only one primary key so that video talks about why it is next so fourth constraint is foreign key constraint so foreign key constraints so this constraint is the one which will help us to link the two tables link the two tables and it is going to define uniquely identifies a row or record in the another table it is going to identify a row or record in a another table it means that so this foreign key is the one which will help us to link the two tables two tables let us say so when i say link the two tables physically if you go for practical example employee comma department table so employee comma department table it means that so once the department name is defined then only i can assign that particular uh, department to the particular employee and one more uh, rule i have is so once the employee come into a company it should he should allot to a particular department so that time first i will create a department then i'll go for a employee creation so if you keep a foreign key it means that so both tables should be in sync means it is going to be link the two tables and to link it so in one table it should be a primary key the other table it is a foreign key it's a kind of referential integrity between the two tables so the next one is check constraint next one is check constraints so what is a check constraint so check constraint is the one it is going to validate that particular value let us say i have a let us say so i have a value so let us say i have employee table so which contains salary column okay so while inserting salary field into the employee table so i want to check it if the salary is greater than if the salary is salary is greater than some 4000 it means that 
So while inserting a record into the particular table, if the salary is greater than 4,000, then only it will allows to it allows to to insert. Otherwise, it is going to abort. That action is going to be abort. Means I can put a check constraint on a single column on a salary column. Assume it here. So means if the salary is less than, let us say, I am trying to insert 3,000 salary. Okay, then it is going to fail with the reason of check constraint is aborted. Check constraint is failed. So that is how so we are going to impose a check constraint on a employee table so on any table you can put a check constraint to validate that particular otherwise some joining date so our date of birth let us say date of birth so i want to i want to uh, like a uh, recruit the people whose uh, date of birth is uh, on a particular date 1990 so if the date of birth is greater than that so then only i'll i'll uh, uh, recruit into my company otherwise i'll simply reject it with a failure message saying that check consent is particular failed so if the person came so with a date of birth of 19 like a uh, 1889 let us assume it 1989 so then so this is going to be fail with a violation of check constraints so for these kind of scenarios so we will be using the check constraints so next one is default constraint so default constraints so there are some scenarios where so i need to default it to a particular value once i once i insert a, a column into a once i insert a row into a particular table i want to default a particular column into a specific value let us say so my employee table contains these fields id comma name comma salary comma is active field so in this scenario so while inserting data into the particular table so rather than inserting a is active field i can default to active as one by default i want to insert a particular employee as a active so that time i can put a default constraints on a particular column saying that whenever i insert a data into a particular table so if i insert a specific value to this is active column then it automatically go and sit into it otherwise if i am inserting only these fields into a particular table then it is going to be default to a single value so that is nothing but a default constraints so these are all the six constraints so we have in the sql server so in this video we talked about so why constraints required in sql server and what are all the different types of constraints so that's it so if you have any questions please write your questions in the comment section so that i will answer you thank you thank you for watching